So once you've built a molecule and you've gotten rid of the build window, maybe you realize you built it wrong and you need to change some things around. This should see it be a C double bonded O or something like that. If you need to edit this structure that you already have, you're going to go to the top menu and click on build. And then under that, uh, click the edit build. And then your um, build window will pop up so you can add things or not. So maybe I actually wanted to put another carbon over here and have it be um, uh, a different type of molecule where oxygen is in between two, two carbon atoms. Um, for now, I'm actually just going to delete this and go stick with my alcohol that I had. Minimize that, get rid of that window. Now, as you go across the top of the screen, um, you've got file where you can, again, hit the new build here rather than on the graphical toolbar. Um, you can go to edit um, where, where you can copy and paste molecules. So I can click on this and copy the molecule and then paste it. So I'll have two alcohol molecules next to each other. Um, I can center it. So if you somehow lose the molecule, in the page it like goes way off in the left corner and you can only see it if it's super tiny you can click on center and it'll put the molecule back in the center that's that's helpful <laughs> um and then the third option here on the on the toolbar is model and so we've got the right now it's on ball and spoke model so that each atom is represented by a ball and the bonds between them are are spokes but you could use the wire model okay where now this is there's a carbon at the vertex of these wires and there's an oxygen here at the vertex of uh you know hydrogen oxygen carbon um it's a little harder for me to see this way um, so usually i don't use that one ball and wire can be helpful and it all this really does is minimize the size of the balls and the wires so that you can see other features like the dipole moment um, that you would put on here tube okay so this is kind of like the the spoke version except larger tubes so you can see the colors better um, ball and spoke that's where we started or you can do space filling which is to say that honestly there's not a lot of space between atoms in a molecule um, those electron uh, those electrons get shared um, and the whole thing just kind of becomes like a big bubble um, you'll notice that this kind of looks like the elect the electrostatic potential map, except without that electrostatic like colors involved. It just is sort of telling you where the atoms are. Um, you can also hide uh, the molecule, which is not super helpful. So we'll go back to our uh, ball and spoke version. Under geometry, which is the next thing on the on the toolbar, you have measure distance, measure angle, and measure dihedral. Now these three things are really helpful for measuring bond lengths and bond uh, bond angles. If you go to measure distance, okay, then you can click on any two atoms and it'll tell you how far apart they are. If they are adjacent atoms that are actually bonded to each other, then this will be the bond length down here that it reports. Um, but you could say how close are this atom and this atom and it'll still give you a distance. It's a it's a linear distance between those two atoms. It's not through other bonds. Um, but that's actually really helpful for determining how close different molecules would be to each other. Or once you get to organic chemistry, um, you learn a lot about steric hindrance and that sort of thing. And so that's helpful to know there as well. Um, you can also measure the angle. So if we look at this tetrahedral end, uh, the typical tetrahedral angle is going to be 109.5. So we can measure how that's different for this alcohol by clicking on hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen. Um, and that angle here is 109.36. Okay, that's pretty cool. I can see if that's consistent from one to the other. That's 109.36. It's pretty cool. I can do this one. Oh, and that's 110.7. So it's a little bit larger for this set, okay, because this hydrogen over here that's on the oxygen is actually pushing those two away from each other. And so those are the types of interesting observations that you can make about bond angles. You can also measure the dihedral bond angles, which is going to measure the the angle between this carbon hydrogen bond and this oxygen hydrogen bond. So for example, how far around, so if I look down this axis, how far around 
is this hydrogen from this hydrogen. And you can see right now that, that they're 180 degrees, but you would measure that by going to dihedral angle and then clicking on the four atoms that are involved in that angle. Okay, and you can see that that's 180 degrees. Um, you could also look at the other dihedral angles, right, and see that that is about 60 degrees. And hopefully that makes sense because if this um, if you had flattened this part here, then each one of these would be 120 degrees away from each other, right? And this is about halfway between these two, which is a 60, okay? So hopefully that makes sense.